All right, recording in progress. Welcome. I am screen sharing here. I know it's probably not huge. Uh, I, you know, it's about as big as I can get it. Um, I'll see how it goes this first time and then I'll fix it next time if it's terrible. My name is Jeff. Welcome. Um, I'm going to type up pages from a pilot. Uh, I've had this idea for a few years. Um, it's very much to me in the vein of Moonlighting or Cheers meets action adventure style episodic 80s, 90s TV uh, with a little bit of hometown Baltimore anti-lore in it and uh, just, you know, really meant to be fun and just fun alone. Um, and I've been working out a basics of this with one of our breaking story zooms for the last couple of weeks. Uh, and so that's kind of what I'm basing this on right now. And this is what I've got that I'm working off of. It's uh, just some, I just have these little beats that I worked on uh, for the first, what I think will be like 30 minutes worth of stuff. So here we go. Let's see what's up. Um, I know we're in Baltimore. Uh, I'm going to talk as much as I can, but I have no idea how long that's going to last. Um, I am listening to something else in my headphones just because that's the way it goes. Uh, I know that we're in uh, exterior Fells Point uh, late on a Thursday. Um, I know that we're looking at, uh, I looked this up a second ago, <laughs> I swear. Uh, the Ritz Cabaret. I have been bothering myself over what this car is going to be. And I just really think in the end, there was only one choice. Uh, <laughs> it's a car meant for a certain personality type. Sorry, Brandon. Names. Uh, I don't like this guy. Um,
Why? You know where the C is. Sorry, I suck at names. <laughs> um, I'm just going to say... Uh, Sorry, uh, episodic TV, you know what I mean? I, I want to introduce the world. I want to give the feeling for what's going on in here uh, with a genre moment that suits what it is. Um, <clears throat> and uh, very much in style of those old detective shows where it's like, let's set up the crime uh, that's going on. And then we're going to get to the characters very shortly. And we're going to walk through this world of uh, of unfolding what this crime means to this pilot and to the series uh, overall, even though it's episodic. what it means overall coming up. So that's where we're going. Um, but right now we're in this like introduce the genre style stuff. Uh, and we're, we're getting through this moment, but you know, bear with me. I feel like I'm taking forever. Who knows? Uh, you know, and here we really are on the move. Um, and <laughs> I just want to try something here, you know? Uh, okay. Um, they, Wait as parents take the keys to drive the truck from the valet. Yes, here we go. Let's see if this works or not. Uh, just trying something here for fun. <laughs> um, Parents has his phone uh, on a, uh, you know, on a holder before him. Recording test video and rehearsal for his own podcast. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm going to try this. Keep reading this lately. What the hell? Here we are. Because uh, I get it. You know, it's interesting. It's nice how I've been doing this a long time. It's interesting to see format evolve. And I kind of like seeing new stuff and picking up new little tricks. Uh, the ratio of attention, not at all safe. <laughs> um, excuse me.
<laughs> John Lennon quote. <laughs> Excuse me while I find out. <laughs> How many dead in World War Two? Yikes. I forgot you guys were there for a minute, if indeed anybody is ever going to be there. Uh, and what do we die for? Man, I just hear my uncles talking at Thanksgiving when I'm like 14 years old. Uh, and what do we die for in the end? We die for Rosie the Riveter. I just have to say that image of the, uh, you know, the Teamsters leader all through the strike was just so fun and so interesting. And I, you know, it just really reminded me in so many ways of like today's version of such a powerful thing. And I know so, you know, those pins and all that stuff was such, you know, so fun. So anyway, uh, in the end, we did it for Rosie the Riveter. I literally have heard my, uh, my uncles uh, talk about this when I was a kid. Uh, we die for Rosie the Riveter. The men go off and fight. The women take the jobs. The men come back. The women don't want to give up the jobs. We masculine, masculine. Oh, you know what? He shouldn't know either. We mascul, masculinated. He breaks. <laughs> ah, shit. I mean, ah, you know. You know what they do. All right. From the top. Outside. He just clocks that in his automatic driving mode. In his I don't want to make it sound that way because he's in a he's in a Tesla thing and it'll sound like he's literally driving himself. He just clocks that in his um distracted driving mode, he's making a late left at a light that's just now turning from yellow to red. Instantly, his eyes go to the rear view mirror, as you do when you do something wrong, uh, to see if he got away with it. <clears throat> Interior surveillance van, continuous, following at a safe distance, headlights relatively dim, The, uh, what are they called again? <laughs> Gruff and understated. Gruff. You can tell how big a character is they're going to be.
I don't know. Sure. I don't I never know what the difference is. I think sheriff is somebody who works for the courts or something and the cops are caught. I don't know. It all is confusing. I always pretend like I know what it means. Like, oh, yeah, the sheriffs, of course. Um, a local uh, sheriff's car. Perched behind a uh, a road sign, a thick road, you know, a, a, um, a large road sign puts on the lights and peels out after the cyber truck, which is funny to say out loud. Um, all right. Um, ah, shit. I'm thinking that worked, but I'll fix it later. Um, exterior, uh, you know, um, I'm just gonna, I'll generic it now and worry about it another time. I think what I'm gonna do is do like four or five of these to get through this thing, uh, ultimately, or however many it takes. And I'm gonna try to do half hour at a time, so maybe it'll end up taking six, but, uh, and then do a couple of revisions. Um, anyway. Sorry. I assume. What I want to do is I want to cut back and now, you know, do a little line over this while we see while we see the multiple players at play here. So it's like following a safe distance. There goes the thing. Actually, your bottom street continuous. The sheriff's car uh, goes, you know, uh, catches up. So loud and so bright. Interior is continuous. Parents is pissed as he studies the lights behind him. Starts to pull over. Simultaneously removes a pistol from his jacket pocket and casually slips it into a hidden compartment in the trunk, uh, in the truck, um, in the uh, driver's seat of the truck. It's like the, uh, it's like a secret menu. Um, casually slips it into the hidden as the cyber truck rolls to a stop. He glares at the rear of the truck. There's something there giving, uh, something there causing him to show as a body cue. Just a little bit of nerves from Mr. Perfect. <sighs> Sorry, long day. Um, <clears throat> Zoom shows a body cue, just a little bit of nerves from Mr. Perfect. Uh, sorry, there's like some kind of weird bug crawling across my screen because I'm outside. Because <laughs> it's kind of nice out. It's almost autumnal, like there's leaves falling and everything. It's wild. Anyway, sorry, I'm stalling for time, as you can tell. As the Cybertruck rolls to a stop, he glides at the rear of the truck, something there causing him to show as a body cue. Just a little bit of nerves from Mr. Perfect. Interior surveillance van continuous, given no choice uh, other than to expose themselves. The surveillance van rolls past the scene as the gruff Agent turns to clock. Uh, agent adjusts his passenger side mirror to clock. Behind him, them, um, the cop car, sheriff car, pulling in behind the cyber truck at the side of the road. All right, sorry. Um, just realizing that every once in a while you have to hit save. Um, okay, so now we're like exterior, uh, 
you know, I don't know, Bayad Street. I have no, I, it's been a long time for me, so the geography isn't going to work out that great. Uh, moments later, uh, the sheriff's deputy, about 30, undersized in terms of height, <laughs> oversized in terms of neck and bicep. <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, steps out of his car and walks with as much authority as he can muster up toward that cyber truck, really strutting past its, you know, sheer metal design to the driver's side window, which winds down to reveal deputy uh if you want to know how bad i am with names i've already forgotten this guy's name <laughs> there we go um Radcliffe. <laughs> that's me big fan big fan we go to a uh, body cam view. Right. Um. to get a little further in 30 minutes i don't think i'm going to go too much past 30 just because i don't want to challenge anybody's length in any individual piece but i'm going to continue to do them pretty regularly like uh hopefully every other day for a while until it's done um anyway just checking because i think i'm at about 25 and i don't want to go too crazy uh i don't want to like i always you know I'd, I'd like to do 10 pages but anyway let me see what happens in the next couple of minutes if I'm shutting up and doing it instead of avoiding it, uh, there's something going on there that's holding his attention. Um, let me go inside here real quick. Uh, I tell you, a lot of people like to do this intercut or this just do things or colons. I, I, I guess it's old fashioned, but I like to do the cuts because I think it makes you look decisive. Um, I just, you know, there's something about it. It's like, hey, this is the way that it flows. And now we're like exterior Fayette Street, continuous. The uh, deputy passes the shiny, sheer exterior on his way back to his car. As he's nearly passed, there's a rumble from inside. It holds him up a moment. It's hard to identify. It's like something moved in there or something in the engine adjusted. He turns back toward the window where he can plainly see 
Terrence is watching him in the side mirror. Something about the look on his face makes the death on Terrence's face, sorry. Gives the deputy pause. He's about to head back toward Terrence and ask a question when voice, one a uh, weak woman's voice. Good Lord. Inconveniently. New glasses? Ginkgo biloba? What's the answer? I'm afraid this is going to have to end inconveniently for you. A little JFK for you there. Um, I just got to check and see something. Do they call the trunk of a cyber truck anything in particular? Cyber truck. Oops. Cyber truck trunk name. Does the cyber truck have a trunk? The composite bed doesn't need a liner. Even more room in the front truck on the roof and in a hidden gear locker. Is big enough. The super tough composite bed doesn't need a liner. <laughs> Good Lord. All right, let's go with this. The super tough composite bed doesn't need a liner and is big enough for a four by eight construction materials. Access a six by four bed plus even more room in the front truck. Uh, let me get a look in that. Trunk. There, just that's a bed. Excuse me. It's not called a trunk. No. Ah, it's called the bed. <laughs> um. Uh, an exterior. No. Damn it. Now I gotta look what it, you know. Sorry. Normally we do this stuff ahead of time, but sort of flying by the seat of the pants on this particular one, but it's fun. Okay. As the rear window opens to reveal the bed along with another enclosed space for, damn, they had a specific word for it. The gear locker. <laughs> this is so silly. I'm just a person who knows nothing about cars. So it's always funny whenever it comes up, it's like, mm. um, Anyway, try it's a statement car, right? So trying to make a statement with about the person. 
Uh, Terrence stands back and remembers, and the look on his face, and um, face is, I gotta find a way out of here. Just as the deputy sees the ear knocker rattling and reaches to unlatch it, the backup cars pull up alongside and surround Terrence before he can make a move. <laughs> um, <clears throat> all right. So then it's uh, exterior, let's see, uh, five minutes later, Terrence is pressed against a sheriff's car, and from behind him, the deputy asserts. <laughs> Let me get it right. Um, don't worry, it, it, it'll be cut off very quickly. What the heck? save um uh, I've got to do a little more this isn't very specific sorry back of course both long sides around you before you can make a move there it's going to stand up here, I wonder where a young woman. Sorry. Oh no, the helicopters are here. They've been going through my Google search while sitting here doing this, and they decided to come. Oh crap! Suddenly, it's uh, it's Act Three of Goodfellas here. Um. The now opened uh, gear locker where a young girl no more than 17 has been bound and contained. 
Really going to 80s, 90s episodic TV. <laughs> anyway, um, a real passion of mine. I, I really think that we're uh, we're all headed back there again um, in the most fun possible way. Uh, all right. Um, so, you know, the, the, the jerk has been captured. It's taken a, a bunch of pages. It's the opening. It sets the tone for the kind of a show that we're talking about. Um, it's, you know, a little bit of crime, a little bit of... Uh, what we're about to see now, mostly what we're about to see now. Like I said, a uh, little moonlighting inspired, a little tears inspired. Um, here's how the two people get together. Um, what's the way to do this? It's late. Um, I think it's like this. Uh, interior, corridor, outside, corridor of fourth floor. Um, late night. A woman, a powerful and intense black woman in uh, night clothes covered by an elegant uh, European, I'm going to have to look up a good one, raincoat. Why?
Jui. All right. Uh, I'm going to cut it there because it's been a while. Uh, I'm just a little into it and I really don't want to stop. I, and I really wanted to hit 10. This is a show about vigilante justice uh, and that's where it's going. Um, and you can tell that something was set up back there at the beginning uh, that's about to blow up in their faces as far as having this case. And it's going to cause um, our, our girl Liz an intense amount of uh, of dissatisfaction. Um, I'm going to start next time by going back through the first eight and then I'm going to push forward to about 20, I hope, but more realistically, probably 16 or 18. Thank you uh, for being here. Um, really appreciate it. Uh, part two is coming soon. Um Really appreciate you coming here to the channel. Did not realize that while I was doing this, it got dark on me. So I apologize. See you for part two. Good luck, everybody.